What is happening and welcome to another Photography Talk episode, episode 166. Now, friends, in this week's uh, Photography Talk episode, we're going to discuss not one, but two new Canon cameras. Now, the first is the Canon EOS R8, which is a compact, budget-friendly full-frame camera with good photo and video capabilities. Now, the second is the EOS R50, which brings the EOS M50 vibes to the R lineup with its small, lightweight body and APS-C sensor. Now, but Canon isn't the only camera that is bringing new goodies to the party this week. Nikon recently released official specs for its forthcoming Nikon Z 85mm 1.2S lens, which looks like this thing's gonna be a killer addition to any portrait photographer's kit. But friends, all of these details are gonna be coming up here in a moment, but first, look, every single week, we bring to you these small little bite-sized little news nuggets kind of wrapped up in this video here, the top three things that are kicking along here. Now, of course, we put these videos together so therefore you can stay informed as far as what is happening in the industry. Now, of course, if you find some value with this video, friends, as I always do, we sure would appreciate you crushing the heck out of that like button down below because it really does help with the whole YouTube algorithm. That said, let's get on to this week's headlines. Now, as many of you know, I shoot with the Canon R5 and the R6. And as a Canon guy, I'm excited. I am thrilled to see the EOS R lineup continuing to grow. Now, recently, Canon unveiled two new cameras. You have the R8 and you have the R50, which I'll discuss more here in a moment. The R8 actually reminds me of the R6 in that the R8 is also a full frame camera with a 24 megapixel sensor, dual pixel autofocus, and the Digic X processor. But all of those features are packed in a much more smaller compact body that's lighter and heck cost less, which Hey, who doesn't like that? Now, other R8 features include AI-powered subject recognition, up to 40 frames per second burst shooting, in-camera focus stacking, and the ability to create HDR stacked images inside the camera as well. Now, on top of the camera is Canon's new hot shoot, which allows the R8 to connect directly to certain microphones rather than having to use the old school wires there. The R6 II, you may recall, has this new hot shoot as well. Now, on the left side of the camera, you'll find the microphone, headphone jacks, the USB charging port, and the micro HDMI port, all of which are underneath a moisture sealed cover. Now on the back of this thing is a three inch LCD screen that flips out to the side. Now the screen is a 1.62 million dots of resolution. Now in terms of video, the R8 is capable of outputting 4K 60p video via its micro HDMI port on the side of this thing. Now it can internally record 4K UHD up to 60p, but there is a 30 minute time limit on this. However, there is a two hour time limit on the 4K UHD video at 30p and full HD video at 30p. Now other video options include C-Log3, Capture, 10-bit uh, 422 video, vertical video metadata, and much, much more. Now the R8 doesn't have image stabilization, which is kind of a buzzkill, but when you look at the price of this thing, it's to be expected to some degree. So anyways, just be aware that if you do purchase one of these, that you will need to invest in image stabilized lenses to go along with it. Now the big question, which we kind of hinted about here a moment ago is what is the cost of this thing. The body itself will set you back about $1,500. A kit version that includes the RF 24 to 50 millimeter, this is a 4.5 to 6.3 IS STM lens, is about 1,700 bucks. Now, if you ask me, that's not a bad deal for this thing. Now, if you wanna learn more about this particular uh, camera, I'm gonna put links in the description below. Now, the other new Canon camera that we need to discuss here is the EOS R50. Now, as we speculated in the past, the R50 is essentially, it's the replacement for the EOS M50 Mark II. Now, this camera is roughly the same size as the M50 Mark II and features a 24.2 megapixel APS-C sensor. Now, despite being smaller, cheaper lens, the R50 shares some of the features with the R6 two in the R8. For example, the R50 has the advanced subject detection technology from the R6 two in the R8. Likewise, the R50 has the same AI powered subject recognition technology. Now there's also Digic X processor 
underneath the hood of this thing. All right, the R50 does not have a fully mechanical shutter. Instead, it features an electronic front curtain shutter and an electronic shutter. Now, the camera can shoot uh, up to 15 frames per second with the electronic shutter and 12 frames per second with the electronic first curtain shutter. And like the R8, there is no image stabilization. Now, in the back of the thing, you do have an OLED viewfinder with 2.36 million dots of resolution and a TFT LCD test screen with 1.62 million dots of resolution. Now the R50 is capable of taking RAW, CRAW, JPEG, and HEIF. I can never pronounce that there. Either way, still images, uh, so it can also connect wirelessly to your smartphones or use the USB-C cable for wired transmissions. And you also get Wi-Fi and Bluetooth for what it's worth. The video capabilities include uncropped 4K video at 30p that is oversampled from 6K video. You have full HD video is available at 60p and 120p. Though the 120p video does not include audio and there is a one hour recording time limit. Now this thing is priced at $680 for the body only. Now the R50 is definitely aimed at budget conscious buyers and the beginner photographers. Now kits will be available for the R50 in either the RF, I'm sorry, with either the RF uh, 18 to 45 millimeter. Now this is a 4.5 to 6.3 IS STM or with the brand new RF S 55 to 210 millimeter. Now that is a 5 to 7.1 IS STM for $1,029. Again, what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to put a link in the description below if you want to get more information or you want to pick up one of these. Now, many of you may know, before I was a Canon shooter, I was a longtime Nikon shooter actually for about 17 years. And I had a lot of fun with Nikon cameras and lenses over the years with some of my favorite photos I've taken, taken with Nikon gear. Now, for all of you folks out there that are, are shooting Nikon, well, you have another lens to lust after, and that is the Nikkor Z 85mm 1.2S. Yeah, they went there. Now, what should obviously jump out to you here is the massive 1.2 aperture. Now, this will be the first 85mm Z lens with an aperture of that size. Now, this lens is specifically designed for studio portraiture, weddings, close-ups, and so forth. And Nikon says that the image quality will be ultra high resolution and nothing short of captivating with intense sharpness. In fact, Nikon claims that the sharpness of the lens will render skin and hair with incredible detail while also providing gorgeous bokeh in the background as well. So Nikon really came out swinging here with this thing. The lens has 15 elements in 10 groups and is essentially the same size as a bazooka. Well, not really, but it's a big lens. It weighs more than 2.5 pounds and is 4.1 by 5.6 inches in size. And what's funny about this is as I was reading the details on this, I'm thinking, hmm, that is a big lens. And I had to go back because I forgot the, the weight of the 2870, which is behind the, or actually on my R6 and is always my primary lens that I'm using here. The 2870 F2, I thought that was a big heavy lens. That weighs almost two pounds. So this one is over a half pound heavier than my 2870 F2. And if you're familiar with that lens, you know that's a pig of a lens. So. This is a this is a big girl here. Anyways, features include weather sealed construction. You have a minimum focus distance of 2.8 feet in nano crystal coating that reduces coasting and flare. Moreover, the lens has two ultra quiet STM motors and are a must for weddings and other event photography where you don't want noisy lenses stealing the show. Now, since this is a professional lens, well, you got to have the professional price. Well, according to Nikon at least. And so this thing is priced at $2,800. But if Nikon's description of this lens is nothing short of captivating, holds true, $2,800 is a small price to pay for this thing. Now, if you wanna have or take a further look at this lens, again, I'm gonna put a link in the description below. Well, friends, that is it for the news this week. Now, usually at this time of the video, I'm usually gabbing about our giveaway, but our giveaway has ended. So, um, yeah, well, you all stay tuned for next week as we announce the winners and also announce our new giveaway. So, yeah, stay tuned on that. But before we go diving off here, there is one one more thing, if you enjoy this sort of content, be sure to head over to Photography Talk, sign up for an account. Friend, it is free to do so, and it's gonna give you access to thousands of related or photography related articles on the site, including news articles on camera gear, photography tutorials, and much, much more. So take a moment, sign up for an account, and get access to material that will help you take your best shot. 
And now we are officially done for the day. So uh, friends, as always, I am humbled. I appreciate each and every one of you watching these videos because you're supporting our channel when you do so. And that really means a lot considering all the, uh, the time and effort that goes into each and every one of these videos. So we really do appreciate that. So thank you very much. And of course, it's that time of the video where I'm gonna ask you to do all that I don't know what I was doing there, but I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna ask you to do all the YouTube stuff. So please consider hitting the like, the subscribe, and so you don't miss any of our future upcoming videos, hit uh, all notifications so YouTube will do its notification thing when we release a new video. But friends, that is all I have here for you today. So again, thank you very much. You get out there, stay healthy, and take your best shot.